community. Thank you. Tell us your name and where you were born. Okay. Name is Randy Reese. I was born in Lubbock, Texas, uh, 1953. So what was happening in your life around 1965 when the city of Pflugerville was incorporated? Let's see, 1965 I was in high school and uh, I would come to Austin occasionally but Pflugerville was just a little dot on the highway that we never really, we drove past but we never knew it was there. Uh, how did Pflugerville come on your radar? Well, I, I taught school uh, when I, I taught school up in Lubbock for a while, moved down to Austin and taught in Austin for several years. And I started looking for a small town to find for my children, to raise my children in like I grew up in. And uh, Pflugerville just seemed, when I, we came out and uh, went to Spiller Hitches actually get a, cu a cab from a truck. And I looked around and I said, wow, this is a neat little community. And uh, again, I wanted to raise my daughters in a small uh, community like I grew up in. Uh, and it was small when you moved here uh, in 1984, but it didn't stay small for long. What was your role when you came to the community? And when I came here, I came as an assistant principal at Pflugerville Elementary. At that point, there were two elementary schools, one middle school and one high school. And uh, I was assistant principal for one year. Uh, and then uh, we opened up Northwest Elementary, the beginning of the... Uh, of a lot of schools to be open, and I became principal at Pflugerville Elementary, and I was their principal from 1985 until 1996, I guess. As principal, uh, one of your roles was to hire faculty for your campus. Yes, ma'am. So when you interviewed uh, educators, what would you tell them about Pflugerville? It was really interesting. I, I inherited a wonderful staff. Uh, several of the uh, teachers that were at the elementary school, the Pflugerville Elementary as we called it, we had the Pflugers and the Weisses and the Bowles and all of the, a lot of the, the names around here. I would uh, talk to them about the type of children we had. Uh, when I came, it, we were kind of, the majority of the children were blonde haired, blue eyed, agrarian farmers kids who had lived here for a lot long time most of them were rural and uh, even though it, we were a very large school district there weren't a whole lot of people living here at that time but we still had about 900 kids when I came to to the school and that was the beginning of the growth that we had. One of the programs that you did was uh, for the students to take a field trip out into the farming community. Tell us about how that came about and what the field trip consisted of. Oh, that was so, such a such a wonderful thing. We, uh, two of our, our, our families, the Prinzes and the Haymans, had a piece of property. They both had two pieces of property out in the country. And we, we found out, we discovered that a lot of the kids, even though some of them live in the country, they really weren't involved in the rural life and we really wanted them to see what happens. We uh, worked with Mr. Heyman and Mr. Prince, and we would take our third grade classes. They, take, they were studying Texas at that time and we would take them out there and they would have the opportunity to uh, pet a lot of different animals, to look at a lot of farm machinery. And we had a lot of volunteers from our neighborhood, uh, from our community like Herbert Bowles, who would show them how a corn cob stripping machine would work. Kids had never seen that. A lot of the parents and teachers never seen that either, uh, but that was a it was a yearly thing. We'd have a big cookout, and it was just a just a wonderful experience for the children to be able to see what it was life what life on a on a farm was like. What were the neighborhoods in, around your school at that time? Let's see. We had Gatlinburg uh, was the one right behind us. Wow, there's a lot of neighborhoods there that weren't there back then. Uh, Pflugerville Elementary was kind of out in the out in the sticks a little bit. It was across from Emanuel Lutheran Church, and uh, but we had Gatlinburg Community. We had some of the downtown. We had Old Pflugerville. Um, we had Willow Creek had just started, I guess, in that at that time, and uh, that's about all I can think of. But so, but most of it was rural. As principal, you uh, came up with unique ideas to motivate <laughs> students to uh, get into educational endeavors and to enjoy them. Yes, ma'am. What were some of those activities? 
Well, our, our big focus was always on reading, reading math, the, 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 the primaries, but reading, I, I did a lot of pretty funny uh, motivational things with them. One of them, uh, in order to get them to read, I would give them a goal. I'd say, okay, if everybody in the school, if we can read 600 books in this next month, and we keep track of all those, I said, I will move my desk to the top of the school and sit on the school for a, a day. And uh, they, of course, they always made the go. And I'd haul my desk up there and crawl up on top and spend the whole day up on top of the roof of the school. Uh, kids got a big kick out of that. And uh, we did other challenges. Uh, one time they duct taped me to the wall of the gym. Uh, I kissed a pig one time. Uh, read to him from a big bowl of jello. Uh, Things like that to keep them going. But I think sitting on the roof has probably got more attention than anybody else. I think the kids remember that probably more than anything. Um, as your career progressed, you uh, went to another elementary school and then another position in the district. Tell us about that movement. Okay. Uh, I thought I was probably going to retire at Pflugerville Elementary, but uh, as they continue to open schools every year, an opportunity happened in 1996 they were opening a school called Spring Hill Elementary in the Spring Hill subdivision. Uh, and Mr. Spoonmore called me in and said, Randy, I think it's time for you to spread your wings a little bit. And uh, so I thought about it and prayed over it and said, okay, I'll take that. And uh, opened up a new school and that was a great experience. Spring Hill Elementary is a wonderful school, still is. I was there from 1996 to 2002 when uh, then Libby Gardner, the superintendent, called me in and said, Randy, you've got a really good knowledge, historical knowledge of the school district and of the city and you're involved with a lot, you know a lot of people. We'd like you to come in and, and work as public information person for the district so you can kind of be the face of Pflugerville ISD. And uh, again, that kind of scared me a little bit and I, I never really thought I'd leave uh, the, the principal's job, leave, leave working with the kids, but I went ahead and went up to the admin building, up to the big house, and I was there until 2000, uh, I guess I retired in 2009 uh, as assistant superintendent for public relations, basically. Uh, Spring Hill was one of those unique campuses that uh, all the children walked to school. Yes, ma'am, we were the first, actually we were the, one of the first neighborhood schools that we didn't have any buses. Uh, which was a good thing because our roads were all torn up when we first opened the school. It was kind of a comical thing. But uh, yes, it, it was the first uh, school that we'd had because everything was so spread out. Uh, we always had buses at schools, but this one didn't to start with. Volunteerism is a very important component of any community. And a lot of that begins uh, with elementary school parents. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us about uh, how what parents did and, and how motivated they were to assist uh, education. Because I was in elementary school, I was lucky to have a lot of parent volunteers, a lot of parent involvement. We had a pretty strong PTO, uh, parent-teacher organization. Never really had a PTA, we were always a PTO. But we, we had parents who were very uh, involved in the students. Uh, they had a lot of uh, Oh, they had they had really high standards for their children, and they really believed that a child should behave in school. It made my job a lot easier because I really didn't deal with a whole lot of misbehaviors, at, especially at the beginning of when I first came to Pflugerville. Uh, the, the the old German work ethic was in in, in place really well. Uh, for parents, uh, anytime we had anything up the school, whether it be a school carnival or a PTO meeting or a track and field day, the parents were always there and we didn't, didn't have to worry about going out and hustling for that because they, they, they would come out in force. One of the events that evolved was the Veterans Day celebration. I, I think that yes. may have started at the elementary schools. Yes, uh, ma'am. Uh, do you have any history on that? Not really. We that really started out uh, as a project between the the, the school and uh, actually our our our, Fluger, our physical education department, Janice Swope in particular. Janice always put on a wonderful program. We started inviting parents. Didn't really know what to expect, but we at, we asked anybody who was a veteran. We'd love to honor them. Any 
parents, grandparents, anybody that was related to the kids or not. And uh, the first couple of years we had that, we were just overwhelmed with the number of people that came out to the, the program and we'd sing some patriotic songs and, uh, and tell a few stories and usually have a, a speaker and it was very well received. And I think just about all the campuses do something along that line at this point. Uh, you mentioned Janice Swope, your PE teacher. Another uh, activity she did was to bring in the Czech dancers. From yes, ma'am. West. From West every year. Uh, they, that was a, a, a well received activity, also. Uh, that was something that she, I'm, I'm not sure who else she worked with. Ann Urbanowski was one of my teachers a long time ago, and I think she worked with her also. Uh, but that was a, a very well received program, and they would come in and, and do dances for all the kids and talk to them a little bit about the Czech heritage because it's so strong here in this area, also. As your role as uh, the public information or public relations person, being the yes, face of the district, uh, you were able to see things happen, hear things that happen, and respond to things that are happening. <laughs> yes, ma'am. So, uh, just tell us something about like uh, when there was a weather day. How how did that work? How how was that determined whether you were going to have school or not have school? Good 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 question. Uh, our weather days. Because we run so many buses, it was important that we went out and could survey the roads early on to see if there were going to be any problems. Uh, really, water was never too big a problem, although we did have some bad low water crossings at the time. I got cut off from my own campus one morning when the, the water came across uh, Dessau Road and I couldn't get to my school, so I had to go way out in the country to get back around to get in. Uh, but ice was more of a, a, a concern for us. We would get up and drive the roads at three o'clock in the morning to see what, what they were looking like and then have a little powwow and decide whether we should open school late or not open at all. Um, I remember one time we had the schools closed because there was a gas shortage up north. It was 80 degrees here, but because of the gas shortage, we had to shut down the schools one day during the, it was about March, I guess. And uh, that was an interesting thing. So. Uh when you began that job, did you already have uh, sufficient technology in place, or how did you gather all the data you needed to make that decision? <laughs> Not when I first started. Uh, we eventually became part of a consortium that, that did have access to the technology so we could check with other school districts and see what they were doing, because uh, it was kind of important that if Austin ISD shut down, uh, that Pflugerville could kind of talk to them and say, okay, what's going on? Why do, why do you feel like we need to shut down? Um, we, our consortium actually gave us a, a good uh, networking system to be able to keep, a, keep it all coordinated. And you had uh, direct contact then with the meteorologist? Yes, ma'am. They mm -hmm. would keep you updated more frequently maybe than they would we would we would set phone calls actually and usually we'd have a phone call about nine o'clock at night and then we'd have another gr a conference call then we'd do another conference call usually around midnight to see what it looked like and then by three we would try to make a decision as they try to get the majority of the districts to do the same thing um uh again you can probably look back on your career since you're retired uh were there any aha moments that uh, you recall? <laughs> wow, any aha moments. We were in a very, very fast growing school district. I'd never experienced anything like that. Again, when I brought my daughters here, there were less than 2,000 people in the entire city. There was one stoplight going through town and it looked like my hometown of McGregor, Texas that I grew up in. Uh, when I became principal, like I said, they opened Northwest Elementary, which created me a opportunity to move up into Pflugerville Elementary principal position. And for the next 17 or 18 years, we opened a school every year. And uh, it was just, uh, it, it was so surprising to see, people knew that this was a school district, a good school district. Parents came to us because of our school district. Uh, it, it really spurred the growth and because our school district again is so large we had a lot of room for growth and uh, I think the, the district has changed demographics have completely changed in the last 30 years uh, 
but it's still a very good district, and uh, I believe the there's just a uh, I lost my chain of thought on that. <laughs> but uh, you were uh, your role also uh, con uh, included staying up with the demographics, and you would get reports how frequently in the school district. Uh, we we hired a, a, a demographer that would go out and kind of help us out. At one time, Mr. Spoonmore and Mr. Timmerman would get in a car and they'd drive around and count tricycles. That was always the joke. That's how we figured our projections for the next year. We said, okay, we, we're seeing a lot of the young kids around here, so we know they're coming. We didn't have, there wasn't any real science to it. It was just a gut level feeling and experience. And again, uh, some of the school board members and Ms. Spoonmore would pile off in that car and off they'd go looking and just to, to see what it looked like to see, try to decide, you know, how many more schools we're gonna need. When we started using a demographer, they would actually go out and they would look at, uh, they would they would take all the demographics around here, and they would they would look at birth rates, they would look at uh, move-in rates, they would look at growth, they would look at the uh, the income level of of all the students and all the all the parents around around the district, and they'd also work with the realtors to see and the builders to see what was coming and what the projections were. It gave us a lot better idea of of how to prepare for what was coming. And that was a big challenge because as the number of schools grew, you had to uh, you had to staff adequately, but because of budgeting, you it was it was challenging to not overstaff or understaff. Exactly, uh, we did open two schools a year after we had built them because we got caught in a little slump, a little bubble would would happen. And we, when we built Windermere Elementary, it sat there empty for a year and we used it as a special education center. It wasn't completely unused, but it, we just determined that it would cost, it would be too cost prohibitive to open the school uh, without having enough children. And we did the thing, same thing at Riojas uh, a few years ago, but it was still a good, a good move. And uh, we had the facilities available. Pflugerville has been one of the the big selling points on Pflugerville again was we never had a lot of portable buildings. We always stayed ahead and the kids had a regular build, a school building to be in. And uh, that's, that was a, that, that's been a big challenge, but been a, a really successful note for Pflugerville ISD. You were uh, considered a visionary in a sense because you had to do strategic planning uh, for the district in the future. and. Uh, you can look back now a decade and see uh, how close you were and what you did do. Um, so what do you see as uh, the good things that have happened and are what you project could be in the future for PISD? Well, uh, we did have a, we, we have a, had a group that would always meet once a year and do a long range plan and we continued to try to stay out ahead of it. Uh, we were very lucky to hire some very key people that were uh, excellent um, educators and could help write curriculum. And we always involved our teachers in writing the curriculum. I think they felt had more of an ownership for that. Um, as I have gone around the state, when I retired, I worked for TEA for a little while doing district snapshots. We'd go around and look at the programs going on in, in, in the state. And I was just amazed how many of them were about where Pflugerville was five years earlier. Pflugerville was actually on the cutting edge of so many things and, and, and getting a, 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 such a strong curriculum, I think that really, really helped us in our planning and knowing exactly what we needed to be doing with the kids. Uh, as the face of the district, you also had to interact with the municipalities, the city, the county, and the business uh, community to yes, form those partnerships and uh, so talk about that and then your involvement in the chamber. Okay. I, I was part of the Pflugerville Chamber when it first came into fruition. I wasn't there the first two years I think. I, I joined about the third year uh, just as a community member because I felt like we, that's a responsibility that, that I had being a principal and having the contacts that I needed and, and wanted, it, it kind of helped me out. Uh, I was, I've been a member of so many different civic organizations 
and all of those were not, I, I didn't join those so I'd have school contacts, but I did learn, make a lot of, of really good friends and a lot of, I, I know a lot of people. That really helped me when I had a job and I needed a committee, I could go out and pull from the different groups and uh, would help us. Who was the uh, director of the chamber when you began? Remember? Um, Barnes, uh, Angela. Angela Barnes was the uh, director then. And uh, I really didn't become really involved on a board level until the mid to about 2005 or so. Uh, I got onto the board and then I did two stints as the uh, chairman of the board two different times uh, with, the, with the chamber. So you've seen the uh, the chamber is actually going to be thirty years old. Thirty years old, that's right. And so you have seen it evolve yes, through the decades. And talk about the the chamber's role and and its impact that it's had on on the community. Okay. Well, the chamber's role is to promote the businesses, all the the, the uh, stakeholders that we have. Um, when I came, we didn't have but a, less than fifty members of 50 businesses on our rolls. Uh, back then, Pflugerville was pretty small, a lot of, and still a lot of mom and pop uh, businesses. Uh, when we started getting our big boxes out here and, and starting to really see the upswings with, uh, with our growth, uh, we, we would get on the phone every, we'd have a little phone thing every, uh, July where we'd try to go out and call everybody we knew to try to get them to join the chamber and try to show them that there's a value for being part of the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, our, our director has, has really worked hard and, and they really are, are very good about protecting the, the businesses and, and keeping them involved, providing opportunities for networking. and. Uh, we have grown to over 350 businesses now. It's it's really gotten, I mean, I'm, I may be small. I haven't been on the board in a while, so I don't have all that inside information, but I'm still a, 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 a just a independent member because again, I feel like people ought to have some uh, involvement in their community and that's a good way to be involved. Um, so, uh what were some of the mom and pop stores uh, businesses when you came? Where did you do some of your shopping in Pflugerville? Golly, there wasn't a whole lot in Pflugerville back then. Uh, we, uh, I think, some of the places that were here. We we had to leave town for just about everything. There's an H E B way out Palmer Lane, but that again, it was outside of town. Uh, in town, we we uh, most of my business was probably eating. And I ate it. <laughs> I like to eat in the, the the little mom and pop places here. And we had everything from Mama Jack's, who's still hanging here, but it's changed names. It's changed ownership a couple of times. Uh, I can't think okay. of something. Uh, we'll talk about the first United Methodist Church of Pflugerville. Uh, uh, I think it started in the fire hall. Uh, I don't know if you were here at that time. Yes, ma'am. I actually met, met in, the, in the tavern next to Knievel's Tavern uh, for a while there when we were building our first building. Uh, that, uh, my Methodist faith has always been a, a big part of my life. And coming here, that's the first thing we did was found the church. And uh, we've got a circle of friends. There's probably, I guess, 10 couples that we have been together since 1984. Uh, through our church. And we've watched that church grow from a very small congregation and one, one metal building out there to, a, to three big buildings out there. And we own a lot of property now. And the congregation is, is quadrupled or quintrupled since, since we came there. Uh, it was um, a lot of hands-on. Every, every building that's been built has had people like Ron Sanford, uh, built our new uh, uh, educational. Yeah, educational building and, and the sanctuary also. And uh, every, every when, as it was being built, you'd go up there and there'd be a half a dozen 
church members up there every day sweeping the floors and helping run wiring and 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 being involved in, in building uh, the future for the for the church. Part of the expansion uh, was that you bought the the old gym. Oh, cotton gin. I was in there this all, morning. All the cotton in the area <laughs> was uh, was brought uh, at harvest time. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, we, we, we had an opportunity to purchase that property because it's right adjacent to our, to our campus and we still have it. Uh, I was in there this morning and uh, it's still kind of empty, uh, but it's, it's got a lot, it's got so many neat stories behind it that uh, I can't even recall one off the top of my head, but it's really, uh, you can tell that you're really looking at a part of Pflugerville when you're in that cotton gin. Um. Another uh, charitable group is the uh, Faith in Action. And, yes, ma'am. Uh, tell us what their purpose is and how you were somewhat involved with it. Okay. Faith in Action Caregivers was originally set up uh, to help provide rides to uh, our senior citizens who can no longer drive uh, but are still trying to be as independent as possible. Uh, it's it's changed names since then. It's now called Drive a Senior, but basically, so that people actually know what we did. But we have a, about 150 volunteers who, on a weekly basis, go out and 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 take our our senior citizens to doctor's appointments, or to maybe to go get their hair done, or to go shopping, and to provide the assistance and kind of pay it forward to uh, help them become, stay as independent as long as they can. This organization dependent upon uh, community donations and so one of the uh, mm -hmm. fundraisers was uh, an event usually in December. Yes ma'am. Uh, that you emceed and uh, tell us about some of the talent that was there. Oh, those. singing for seniors we call that. Uh, they still do that matter of fact and uh, we it's primarily, it started out just church choirs. Every church around here who had a choir uh, would come up and, and sing one or two hymns and we'd uh, sing one together and then they'd sing another one and it just kind of rotated people in. We also had a lot of student choirs at one time that would come up and that, of course, brings a lot of people out. Anytime children are performing, you have, you'd have a lot of people show up for that. And uh, I would emcee that every year and uh, that we were really dependent on that, that monies, and we still are. Uh, we, they have a silent auction that goes on with it now, and it's really gotten to be a, a, a little more polished than it was back then, but uh, just as much hearts in it as it ever was. I, I recall uh, one of the key things was, I think, Timmerman Elementary music teacher. Uh, she dressed in full uh, uh, costume, and uh, her students led the Felix Navidad. Felix Navidad, yes. yes. Yeah, they, Everybody would get involved. That's yeah. right. They, she was actually was part of a, part of a group that does, you see them singing at El Rincon sometimes. <laughs> and, uh, and then um, uh, St. Mary's Missionary Church uh, had an awesome oh, choir. Oh, fantastic and, uh, choir. Um, at, at one level, they started singing the Hallelujah Chorus uh, at the end of each. That's right. They would ha they would have everybody moving in their chairs. They, they were very entertaining. Uh, there are uh, a number of civic groups in our community that uh, do multiple fundraisers and uh, yes, use their funds for scholarships or other uh, appropriate uh, activities that uh, is a community talk about uh, those those organizations okay i've been I've been privileged to be a, a member of several of those uh, i guess the first one I, I was ever a member of was the lions club the lions club has been here for decades uh, generations and uh, they do a lot of good things for the the children of our community their primary focuses on, on hearing, I mean, on vision, and they do eyeglass things, but they, they put on golf tournaments and work at Deutschen Fest, and uh, the Lions Club is just wonderful. They, they support our, our uh, Dale Children's Hospital with our monthly bingo that we have. Uh, I was also a member of the Sertoma Club. Sertoma Club is kind of defunct in Pflugerville, although a group of us meet every Tuesday morning <laughs> just to to, to touch base with each other and their their main focus was hearing and doing we, we would go into schools and help do hearing tests with the nurses uh, 
the Pflugerville Rotary Club is another strong one. Uh, the Rotary Club provides a lot of scholarships. Uh, they collect a, a lot of, uh, they, they send children to uh, what's called RILA, it's a Youth Leadership Academy. Uh, the Lions Club sends children to, uh, to, a, to a Lions camp also in the summertime. Um, I'm trying to think of other, that's the main three that I've, that I've been involved in. Uh, you uh, have also been somewhat involved with the Pflugerville Education Foundation. Yes, I don't know if you are a member of that. Or... I'm on the board of directors for the okay. Pflugerville Education Foundation and the A-plus Foundation uh, board of directors. And uh, both of those, uh, both those organizations have a focus on the kids and on the teachers. Uh, the Pflugerville Education Foundation has been around for about eight or nine years now, I believe. And uh, again, it started out just a fledgling group, and now it's 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 become a lot more organized, a lot more sophisticated. We just finished a. Uh, foundation banquet two weeks ago where we made a majority of the money and all that money goes right back into the teachers and the children of Pflugerville uh, in form of scholarships and recognitions and banquets and for teachers, teacher scholarships. So it's one of the neatest things is to go around to the campuses. They apply for monies for different projects and we, we choose a select number of them and take them a big check and with a lot of money makers, you know, noise makers and You've been involved in that several times. It's really a great thing to see happen. Uh, as the community has mushroomed to a much greater population, uh, we see the, the needs have also uh, been parallel to that growth. Mm -hmm. And so supplying those scholarships or meeting the needs of the families and students in the community has, uh, yes, has challenged the uh, civic groups. Uh, and there's always something out there that's Yes, we have. We, we meet once a week, and we always have somebody presenting something to us and looking for for help. And that's that's a good thing. That's why we're there. We're here here to help that help the community. And uh, there, there's there is a lot of need out there, but I feel like our our organizations are work really hard to meet those needs. Um, I think something that's evolved in the last maybe decade is again the food pantry. I know we have the storehouse and right. uh, I think now at least three of the churches and maybe more churches have, have food them. pantries. Right. Uh, and we, our schools have big uh, roundups in, during the Thanksgiving holidays and usually during Christmas time. Uh, I just spent a couple of months at Riojas Elementary in a principal substitute position and one of the things we did was collect collect food and we had food run all we collected enough food to run all the way down the hallway and all the way back it was over 500 pounds of food that we we donated to the the food pantry here in, in Pflugerville and, and we've done that ever since I was at Pflugerville Elementary. Um, so uh, you mentioned Mr. Herbert Bowles. Uh, yes ma'am. Uh, I think uh, you and him met on a regular basis early in the morning sometimes. We Tell did. Me about that experience. Oh, Herbert and Verlene Bowles were just, just wonderful people. Uh, Mr. Bowles got a real kick out of bringing something every, we usually met every, I think it was Wednesdays, it was, no it wasn't, it was Fridays. Every Friday we would meet up at the Con Street uh, Station or Con Street Deli. Uh, before it was even Pecan Street, it was, uh, God, what was it called before it was Pecan Street? Mama Jack's. Yeah, well, we started at Mama Jack's area, then it moved down here on, on Main Street for a little while, and we just called it to the deli. <laughs> and uh, Mr. Bowles would always come up with a little trinket or a, a gear from a machine or something, and he'd say, what do you think this was? Or he would come with pictures of, of Pflugerville from the you know mid-20s, and uh, he was just a fount of knowledge, and, and he, he was such a historian, uh, and it was just a, a wonderful, wonderful guy. Uh, he, he and his wife ate at the deli just about, at Pecan Street Station now, just about every day seemed like, and they even have a plaque on one of the tables for him, and that was, that was his table. I know uh, there's a plaque where you ordered it. It says they were the very first customer. He gave them the first dollar, I think, they had up there also. Um, 
Uh, did he ever talk about being the meteorologist of Pflugerville? A little bit, yes, ma'am. He, uh, he, he was so funny to listen to him talk about the weather and, and to talk about the, uh, how the, he, he was really connected to the land. He was a farmer. He knew how water affected everything. He gets so mad at the at people coming out wanting to redirect streams or dam up things that he knew was going to cause problems. Uh, he had a lot of that land right down from where Lake Pflugerville is now, and, and uh, he, he would always uh, come in saying he was facing another challenge with the, uh, with the county over some kind of agricultural thing, but most of it had to do with, with water. Well, I uh, recall that he kept a, uh, lack of a better word, ledger, uh, but he recorded all the rainfall at his location. At his so location. Uh, and, and today's society, we have the rain stations located at different places in yes. Central Texas. He's so a he human rain there. gauge for he us. <laughs> okay, so uh, you moved here because it was a little family-oriented town. Yes, ma'am. So what, uh, what do you think uh, people would say today? Uh, moving to Pflugerville. We know. I, th I still feel like there is a home. There is a small town feel in such a large area, and we we do hear that from people a lot. That it it, it this still has a a small town feel in the fact that people care about the school, care about the the, uh, uh, the city. When you come to a city council meeting, you see a lot of people here. Uh, they uh, they are involved in in what's going on. Um, I think people feel like the schools are still the center of a lot of the a lot of city activities. That's that's why a lot of people come here still. Uh, but even though we have gotten so big, I think there's still a a very small town feel in the in the way that the relationships are are carried through and. Uh, our, our police officers. When we came here, there was <laughs> two police officers, I guess, and uh, now it's a very large police department. But they're very, they're very personable. They're very uh, attentive to your needs, and uh, same thing with with all our city services, I believe. Uh, some programs were initiated within the city. Uh, one was Citizens on Patrol, and yes, the other one was. Uh, the uh, uh, national night out where com uh, yes, neighborhoods got together. You being a citizen, tell us about the value of those programs, or even if you were involved in either of those. Yes, ma'am. I was in the second graduating class of the Citizens on Patrol. I still, I was wearing my cop shirt yesterday. It's interesting that you brought that up. I haven't pulled it out in a while, but uh, the Citizens on Patrol basically uh, help provide manpower whenever there is a, 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 a emergency going on or if there's something like Deutschenfest or a parade or something we help block the roads off. Uh, we also drive around and in, in we have our own car that we drive around and just we are trained to look for something that's out of the ordinary. Now we're not police officers we don't go in there and stop anything but we do radio in and say we think there might be something that needs to be checked out and the police officers will come out. Uh, the, the Citizens on Patrol has graduated classes, I guess it's probably been 20 years now. Uh, and the, uh, the National Night Out, Pflugerville has won several awards for having such a wonderful program. When you go out on, on the, it used to be in August and I think they moved it to October because it was so hot, but every subdivision just about has some kind of party or some kind of get together. They turn their, their lights on in front of their houses to let people know that they're involved and are watching and uh, it's just a really good, it's a good program. There is a group called the Pocona which is a neighborhood association group yes, that uh, attempts to keep people also connected. Are you Correct. familiar with, uh, tell us about Pocona. Yes ma'am, Pocona it's kind of like neighborhood night, uh, national night out there. They don't sponsor that, but they they promote that. They promote a lot of things going on in Pflugerville. They have a, a monthly newsletter that goes out. They meet once a month, and have really informative programs. Uh, some of our some of our neighborhood associations are very strong in our, our school in our in our city. Um, some of them, like where I live in Pflugerville, uh, I, we don't have a. A, uh, well, I'm in Parkcrest, and we don't really have a neighborhood association 
Uh, we do have some people that go to the meetings, but we don't have dues and that kind of thing. But they do put on lots of programs about water conservation, using the right kinds of plants. Uh, what do you do if you do have a neighborhood association and you have somebody who's parked a broken down car in front of their house? How do you deal with that? And they, they give a lot of really good information. They help candidate forums. They, they, they really candidate uh, forums. Mm -hmm. decipher information uh, even from other levels of, of uh, like from city council. Or they do. Travis they County. kind of they funnel that down. Issues that are pertinent to the whole community, they'll bring in the speaker. Yes, ma'am. And do that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, what do you uh, what do you see in the next 5, 10, 15 years? You've talked about that as far as the school perhaps, but uh, right. let's talk about the city. Okay. Uh, I never thought I'd see the city grow like it's been doing. Uh, I think it, I'm very uh, excited about some of the possibilities with our new town center that might be coming up around where our Hawaiian Falls is right now. Uh, I think we will continue to see the see the, the city grow out to the edges of its of its boundaries. Um, this is a, a, a just a, a well-centered uh, school. I mean, well-centered uh, city. As far as people wanting to move here, we still have good prices. We still have, the housing is reasonable. Uh, the city government is wonderful. Our taxes are going down actually every year a little bit in the city because of the growth of the industry that's coming in. Uh, as far as is Pflugerville, I think the geographic center of Pflugerville is actually going to shift over to about where the town center is. Uh, I'm hoping we will be able to revive Old Town and, and really make that a, 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 a destination for visitors. Uh, we've been trying to do that anyway, but it's just, it's been kind of difficult uh, because of our infrastructure. But uh, I can see Pflugerville still maintaining that old German Czech heritage and flavor downtown where it is now but probably moving some of the, the the city government and some of the retail and things kind of out toward 130 a little bit more uh, downtown has uh, attempted to have special events to generate uh, visitors and one mm -hmm. recent uh, i don't know how long ago several years now the Chili Fest was started. Yes, ma'am. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the Chili Fest? The Chili Fest was an attempt just to have a a homegrown uh, act, uh, event that people could come to. Uh, we started out with about 20 vendors and uh, 20 cooking teams. This past year, I think we had almost 60. Uh, it, it was well received. It's a uh, you know, one day thing. Uh, we used to do it with Cassie, which is the chili cooking, they, they actually could get points through, to, through Cassie. We haven't done that in the last couple of years because we have so many home teams now that just want to come up and, and participate and have fun. Uh, but it's, it's a really, it's, it's become a, something that people look forward to every year. Who sponsors that? The city of Pflugerville is the, is the main sponsor, Parks and Recreation. And it's along uh, Main Street? Along Main Street, yes, ma'am. So the vendors just line up, and then people come and taste the chili? And right, you could buy little cups for, I think, at one time was, you got five cups for a dollar. And you could go around to the different booths and different chili things, and they'd fill your cup up. And then you had little tickets where you could vote on what you thought was the best chili, and then we have a, a big awards presentation at the end for community choice and who gets them. And we also have a, a panel of judges. I've been charge. I've been in charge of the chili judges for several years, and we actually do a do a taste test of all the vendors out there. And once you've had twenty or thirty cups of chili, they all kind of run together. But we've got some really we've had some really good chili over the years. Well, in fact, uh, some of our schools have had teams also. They have participate. Yeah, we have all our churches and civic organizations, and some just. I, I remember my daughter's high school senior class. There's several of those boys that have been cooking in this thing now, and it's been she's been out for 15 years, and they are still cooking in the chili cook-off, and it gives them a, it's a it's a social thing. Mm -hmm. uh, did you play a role in Deutschenfest uh, over the years in any way? I have 
worked at Deutsche Fest uh, through the Lions Club and through the Rotary Club and the in the beverage booths and uh, been part of the parade. I've uh, been in the parade. I used to drive my Teacher of the Year. I had an old 49 Plymouth, and every year when I had my Teacher of the Year, we'd put a big banner on the side and drive in the parade. Uh, I emceed the parade a couple of times. Uh, but most of the time, most of my involvement now is just uh, cooking. Uh, the Rotary Club has a huge tent that we sell German sausage, and I'm in charge of the cooking team, so we're, we're cooking bratwurst and sausage and sauerkraut. Uh, it's part of it's, it's a major fundraiser. That's that's our largest fundraiser by far. Upon retirement, you were able to spend more time weekends riding across Texas. <laughs> and, yes, uh, ma'am. Yet you always come back to Pflugerville, and I think uh, a lot of times when you go out and see other places, uh, you kind of take another look at your hometown. So uh, that's a good point. Uh, wow. Yes, Pflugerville is home for me. I'm, I'm never, I've, I've got friends who say, well, when we retire, we're gonna move down to the coast. Or we're gonna go to Colorado. I said, man, I'm retired and I'm, I'm right here. This is where I'm gonna, they're gonna plant me right here someday because uh, I've, you're right, I've done a lot of, had the opportunity to do lots of traveling, especially in Texas. I've seen most of Texas and there's nowhere I'd rather be than Pflugerville. Okay, so uh, we're going to be winding down, but uh, I'm going okay. to go back to your, uh, the job you retired from. Uh, there were uh, probably times when you uh, wondered how something was going to turn out. Uh, there was the, the good times and the challenging times because you had to make the statements. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, and challenging situations. Are there any of those challenging times you want to uh, share? Gosh, the ones that that hurt me the worst is, is, as far as working with the media, was like when we'd have a child die. We had several accidents over the course of the years, and to get up in, in, in front of the media and talk about what happened, if a child had passed away or if we'd had a, a terrible accident, uh, that was always a really hard thing to do because it just affects you at such a core level. and. Uh, working with the media with things like bomb threats and things like that would that that, that would bring out a lot of people to talk talk to us uh, that was always a challenge um, when we were doing our bond elections working with the with the put on our bond presentations throughout the school district uh, giving the information our, our we have never lost a bond election. Our, our, our schools have done really well. The, parent, the, the citizens here have always supported that. And that was a, a big part of my role uh, was the procure, procurement of land and, and trying to sell the bonds to pass, pay for all that. And it's hard to satisfy all of the people all of the time. Yes, ma'am. Uh, we always had lots of, and we had some some valid concerns. That we've, we've gone to a citizens bond committee and we've involved the people a lot more than we did year, you know, 15, 20 years ago. Uh, and again, once they have that involvement and they see from a, a root level why we need what we need, we haven't had any problems. Okay, well, thank you. Uh, do you have any other comments you want to make? Just, uh, I appreciate the opportunity to do this. Uh, I've, I haven't lived here quite long enough to say I'm a lifelong Pflugervillian, but uh, I, I feel like I've, 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 this is where I'm going to be until, until I'm, I'm no longer here. Well, thank you for your service to uh, the children of this district, thank to you. the uh, teachers, and to the community as a whole through your many venues of volunteerism in the church, well, in the chamber, in your uh, uh, civic organizations, because the power of one is certainly evident. Thank, thank you very you. much. Very nice.